consider a unique processor system executing three tasks T1, T2 and T3 each of which is composed of an infinite sequence of jobs which arrive periodically at intervals of 3, 7 and 20 milliseconds respectively. So we have three tasks and these are arriving periodically in the system in finite times. So if we look at the timeline over here then this task T1 will arrive at every 3 seconds. So initially if T1, T2, T3 all three are there at time unit 0 then T1 will arrive at 3 time unit again then at 6 then at 9, 12 and so on. Similarly task T2 which is there at time unit 0 then it will arrive at time unit 7 then it will arrive at time unit 14 and so on and similarly T3 will first be there at time unit 0 and then it will come at time unit 20. The priority of each task is inverse of its period. So if the task T1 has a period of 3, task T2 has a period of 7 and T3 has a period of 20 and the priority is inverse of its period. That means whichever is the task which is having the smallest period, that task will have the highest priority. So we are considering that T1 has the highest priority, then T2 and then T3 because T3 has the largest period over here. Each instance of T1, T2 and T3 requires an execution time of 1, 2 and 4 millisecond respectively. That means when these tasks come and they are scheduled then each one requires 1, 2 and 4 time units respectively when they have to be scheduled in that instance. So given that all tasks initially arrive at the beginning of the first millisecond, first milliseconds that means this 0 to 1 they all the task 3 tasks are present in the system and task preemptions are allowed that means if a low priority task is running and a high priority task comes in then that high priority task can preempt the low priority task. So we have to find out the first ins instance of T3 when it completes its execution. So this is our task to find out that when is the what is the time unit at which first the instance of T3 is completed. So let's start solving this. So at time interval at time unit 0 all the three tasks are there but since T1 has the highest priority T1 will be scheduled first and it has an execution time of only one so it runs for one time unit and it goes out of the system and it will return again at 3 and then 6 and so on as explained earlier. So at time unit 1, T2 is the next task in the queue. So T2 will start running and it has a execution time of 2. So it will run from 1 to 3. Now till this time, T3 was already there in the queue but T1 has arrived again at this point. So since T1 has a higher priority compared to T, uh, this task T3, T1 will be scheduled again for one time unit. So from 3 to 4 again T1 will be scheduled. You can see all the units which are marked blue are for task T1. All the units, time units marked with green are for T2 and marked with peach color is for T3. So at time unit 4 when T1 completes the only task which is there in the queue is T3. So T3 is scheduled and T3 will run for two time units for till 6. So that means it has finished two time units and two are left and at this time T1 arrives in the system again. Since T1 has higher priority, again it will run for one time unit. Now at 7, T2 also has come in the queue. T2 has arrived because now it's interval of 7 time units. It is 
arriving at every seven time units so t2 has also arrived comparing t2 and t3 again t2 has higher priority so t2 has to run for two time units so t2 will run for two time units from seven to nine so t2 is out but now at nine t1 has arrived again in the system comparing t1 and t3 again so t1 has to run because it is high priority and then at 10 when t1 is also out there is only one process which is left in the queue which is t3 so t3 because its remaining time was only two so two time units it will run and it will finish off its execution the first instance of t3 will be completed at 12 milliseconds so this is the answer and you can also see how the processes which are again arriving after 12 time units how they will be scheduled.